So today's main point is we're going to talk about what Axiom is, of course. We're going to do a brief overview of what Axiom is also uh, and what Axiom isn't. We're going to run through Accountability 2023, some of the main highlights and points, uh, especially focusing on some of the changes in 2023. And then we're going to get to some timelines uh, about what you can expect and when. And uh, honestly, the timelines part of this is going to be potentially the biggest uh, takeaway because it's going to be a lot of uh, hurry up and wait. What is Axiom? Axiom is, um, we wanted to provide users, because uh, we know some of you are new to using Axiom and some of you are experienced users, but with the overall uh, accountability refresh, we want to make sure that you're, um, that you understand kind of what Axiom is able to do. So you're able to run reports based on your overall and domain score. Um, you're going to be creating reports based on those projections on the available data that you have for STAR. You're also available to create custom reports and graph for different uses as you're planning your long-term interventions for students. And you'll also be able to create monitor groups based on the student level data that is in Axiom and that will integrate with AWARE. So it really helps um, a district kind of think about how this, uh, to get started on planning for those long-term goals as you think about your accountability ratings. Uh, one of the main differences between Axiom and regular AWARE reporting is that Axiom is actually building out separate data tables as you import new data. And that's why we highlighted that based on available data part. Um, and so when you call on Axiom to represent accountability related uh, data views, it pulls in without having to recreate it every time. That said, one of the things uh, that differentiates aware reporting from Axiom is this is where you go in and do the big manipulating of data. The quick views are still quick views. You can go in there and pull in multiple tests over time, things like that. We do, however, provide in AWARE a basic domain one data table just as a static report. It's actually based off of the same methodology as Axiom. Aware reporting is also where you're going to create and access your monitor groups over time. So one of the great things about Axiom, when you do create student level monitor groups based off of results, maybe something related to House Bill 4545, for example, you can create those monitor groups in Aware, analyze those monitor groups for any test local throughout the next school year, and then also use those monitor groups as a part of student forms uh, application and monitoring. And so Aware is where you take the information from Axiom and then do something with it in an ongoing way throughout the school year. So we talked about what Axiom is, we talked about what Aware reporting can do, now I want to talk about um, accountability scoring. We know that Axiom and AWARE in this conversation are completely centered around the idea of accountability projections. However, we want to make sure to emphasize that only the agency, only TEA, can assign campus and district ratings and distinctions. So you may go into Axiom, you may see a letter grade, you may see numbers. Those are based off of the methodologies. However, it's all based on available data. And the source of data is the state. And so only TEA can assign those ratings. We make a big deal out of that because um, we do pride ourselves on our data and on our calculations, but we can always miss something based off of some missing data that we didn't have that the state did have. So we want to really make sure um, when you go to the school board and you bring presentation data, those are all based on official formal things that you got from the state. So we highly recommend that third party projections in Axiom or that you do yourself are not presented to the school board. Uh, the, the, the whole point of Axiom is to help you prepare for your intervention, enrichment, and curriculum needs for the next school year. So because there's such um, a big change in the accountability this year and they're doing a refresh, we wanted to provide you with a link for these resources that will help you kind of understand what's happening in the background of Axiom as we prepare for the accountability system for this year. So this link, uh, if, if you want to access this link, it'll, it'll help you um, answer some of the questions that we have. Up next, we're going to go over some of those changes that are happening in the accountability system, but we wanted to provide you with this link so that way you'll be able to go and kind of see for yourself um, after you get off the webinar. For domain one student achievement, the methodology did not change. Our cut scores for CCMR and graduation rates have increased. The star portion of this domain is based on how many students were at approaches and above, meets and above, plus masters divided by three. 
For elementary and middle school, this domain is only based on STAR. The high school adds the CCMR and the graduation rates. The cut scores for STAR portion did not change because the average from 2019 and 2022 scores were very similar to our 2017 cut scores. The grad rates cut scores have increased and the CCMR scores increased significantly. This is because in 2017, the average score was at 47%. For 2022, the average CCMR score was a 65%. So this will impact the high schools with CCMR being 40% of this domain one. Domain two school progress will measure the comparisons of math and reading progress for part A academic growth and part B relative performance will compare the average of STAR and CCMR compared to the campuses with the same economically disadvantaged. It is still the best of parts A and part B. The academic growth portion has changed, moving from the STAR progress measure to a transition table, which you will see on the next slide. Part B relative performance, there's no change in the methodology. Academic growth now uses a transition table. This is on the left side. Students can earn a zero, a one half, or a one for showing progress based on performance levels. The did not meet and the approaches levels have now been divided into low and high groups. We do have previous years of these performance levels broken down into low and the high, but we will not get 2023 performance levels until after the standard setting has occurred. On the right side of this screen, you'll see the accelerated learning. These are bonus points. This will focus on the math and reading for students who failed the previous year and passed during the current year. These bonus points do not have any negative impact on your academic growth. Part B, or relative performance, has no change in the methodology. It still compares your star performance on the y-axis to the schools with the same economically disadvantaged percent on the x-axis. For high schools, the average of star and CCMR are used. The scaled score will be used to average that CCMR and star. In the past, the raw score was used. This change can have a positive impact on the high schools since the CCMR cut score increased. Domain three, closing the gaps, is federal accountability. This domain will look at different groups of students' performance on their grade level, math and reading, their growth, CCMR, graduation rates, STAR, and TELPATH. Three big changes for domain three are the targets were updated by campus type. The student groups have been narrowed and we now have a point system of zero to four. The four groups that we're now going to evaluate are all students, the two lowest performing racial and ethnic groups based on the previous year's math and reading academic achievement. And we have a new high focus group. The new high focus group is made up of economically disadvantaged, emergent bilingual, special education, and highly mobile students. Students will only be counted once in that group, even if they qualify for more than one. Another change is the zero to four instead of the yeses and nos. One and two points will be given for making progress from the previous year, even if a target is not met. A three is equivalent to our former yes. They met an interim target. A four will signify growth above the target, meaning that they reach the long-term ESSA target for the year 2037-2038. All of the groups will still count for school improvement federal designations, targeted and additionally targeted. That will also include former special ed and continuously enrolled. Okay, now we're gonna review some timelines 
starting first with timelines published from the state and the agency, and then uh, followed by timelines for Axiom and release. All right, so as you remember, Axiom relies on information that's both uploaded from data files that you receive from the state, as well as some information that you um, previously have had to manually enter that you find in other places. So just to review, the timelines this year are going to be a little bit different for both the information that you'll need for the manual entry part of Axiom and the state um, student uh, uh, data files. So March 31st, um, the CCMR tracker part one was released. We are going to have the CCMR verifier report coming out at the end of May into early June. Um, so that's where you can look at that CCMR data. Um, perhaps if you've got um, discrepancies and things like that, that's the verifier portion of that. If you don't have any discrepancies, um, you would be able to start using that information um, and put that into Axiom. If not, um, you, you'll have to wait a little bit. Um, the other piece that's coming out this year is the what if report. So since we've had that accountability refresh, um, you guys will be able to see your 2022 um, uh, information projected with the 2023 methodology. Um, so our plan is to try and see if those what if reports will help help us test the Axiom methodology when those come out at the end of this month. The second piece of the CCMR um, tracker will come out in July. Um, so you guys will notice the timeline is a little bit different than you've previously had. So um, in previous years with Axiom, you've had CCMR data a little bit earlier than this and can start doing that um, information input into Axiom. So the timeline is gonna be a little bit delayed this summer. And then finally, the what if reports um, will be public and those 2023 accountability ratings will actually be released in late September. Um, so, you know, we always have information that Axiom can do in that projection. But again, as Ed mentioned earlier, the official accountability ratings that are only assigned by the state will come out in late September. So student data files. Um, so the other piece that Axiom uses is those data files that you get um, that you have to upload into Edgeforia. Um, so May 31st, we are projecting the EOC early scale scores and performance levels. In June, those EOC results will be released for families. In August this year, the third through eight early scale scores and performance levels will be released. And August 16th, those results will be released for families. So the implication is obviously for an accountability projection and the methodology, it's those performance levels that we need to make those calculations and axiom. So um, again, the timeline for this um, based on when those state data files are going to be released is impl it has implications for what you guys will be able to do in axiom because we rely on those cut points. And so until the state has gone through um, and said what that raw score conversion is and, and set those performance levels, um, we won't be able to run the methodology until those have been assigned. These data files are the same data files that you load into AWARE to analyze in quick views. And so the same thing applies even to analyzing the results. Uh, you're able to load them in, you're able to look at raw scores, whatever's in the file, but you're not able to look at scale scores until those are set and those files are released. Um, so that's a good segue to um, our plans for what you can do in Axiom and when. So right now you try to log into Axiom, you may notice that it's not there. You go in there and there's a link to this webinar and there's some information about uh, information and data not yet being available. Sometime in early June, that's gonna change and we're going to return Axiom to your screens. Um, Axiom's running in the background as soon as you load data files in, but as soon as um, uh, we're done with some of our updates that we're working on, you'll be able to go in and configure your campuses based on available data. So earlier when we talked about CCMR data, 
Um, if you go to the verifier, everything looks good. You can start enter, entering that information now. If you've got some discrepancy in your CCMR data and you're waiting for the second round of information to come out, you might want to wait on that. Or maybe you can configure some campuses or not others. It's totally up to you, but you can begin configuring Axiom once we turn it back on. It will be updated for 2023. In June, um, once you have your data files that Amber just talked about, you'll be able to go into Axiom and access that student list that's available normally through one of the domain tables. You'll actually be able to just load that student list and look at the results, um, minus of course scale scores. And so um, this may be useful for some early analysis. Um, you'll have information in that table related to tests taken, uh, score codes, um, whether or not they're in the accountability subset, You'll have information based on uh, high focus groups or different demographic student groups that they're um, uh, a part of. And so you can use that data table to potentially make early monitor groups if you wanted to. And then finally in August, when the rest of the files come in that actually have the scale scores, that's when you're gonna, when those are gonna get loaded into aware like normal, that's when Axiom will display the A through F accountability projections um, as soon as those files are in. And so uh, early on, we talked about how Axiom is based off of available data. Since available data is not complete until August, that timeline is just stretched out this year. I'm gonna review a little bit of what the Axiom updates are gonna be, just so you know what to expect. Gaps domain, those have the biggest appropriately reflect those. The student data table, will be available from this main landing page, as well as, of course, the way it's normally been available through the different domain tables. That student data table will have new filterable options for high focus students. So because that is a demographic designation that can be based on meeting one or several criteria across different other student groups, we're gonna give you a high focus. You can say equals yes, equals no, right then and there and find who those students are. We're also going to have the low, high, did not meet and approaches data once that becomes available. We're going to have the option to view where students are, not just where students were when they tested. That's going to be a big change, especially since we're going to be so delayed in getting this data as we get into the 23-24 school year. Might as well have an option to switch the student uh, perspective to where your students are in the 23-24 school year. The um, biggest change that I can't promise just yet, but we're looking into is can we uh, find some ways to input some of the data for you so that you don't have to manually configure it. So we're exploring different data import options for some of the information that you normally have to um, manually configure. So TBD on that one. Once June, uh, when we turn Axiom back on for you, we'll be able to have more definite answers about what that looks like. At as always, if you have any questions, and we know that there's potential for a lot of questions over the next several months, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask. Uh, also, please reference our online help resources. We're going to be maintaining our FAQ section, which we imagine there's going to be a lot of cues that will get FA'd. So please check back regularly to see if there's any new information there. We will be scheduling and doing another webinar, a live webinar, in August once we have more data available. Uh, in the system for everybody. And we're gonna be running through everything uh, for uh, Axiom again at that point. And so please be on the lookout for information about that webinar.